Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with an algebra video. Today we're talking about systems of linear equations in three variables. Specifically, what do you do when you have a missing variable in one of your equations? So I have uh, three or four different videos discussing systems of linear equations in three variables. I have one discussing the infinite solution case, the no solution case, the one solution case, and one discussing in general what a system of linear equations in three variables is, but this one specifically talks about what do you do when you have a missing variable. So here's our to-do list. We'll have a quick overview. It'll probably be about five minutes, so if you want to skip to the five minute mark, you should be about the point where we start the example. And then we will do an example of a system of three, three equations three variables, and one of the equations will be missing a variable. Just also as a reminder, we're in three space because we have three variables. So let's start our review. So what exactly is a system of linear equations and three variables? Because it sounds kind of complicated. Well, good thing for us, um, it isn't super complicated. And let's break it down. So let's discuss first the three variable issue here. So it just means we have equations and those equations have three variables. So we usually have an X, a Y, and a Z. And the linear part is not horrible either. That just means that our equations fit the form ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, c, and d are just numbers, and x, y, z are the variables. So something that's also important to note is that you won't see, because these are linear equations, you won't see variables that have squared or cubed or one-half as, as an exponent. They will just look like this, x, y, and z. There's an implied one there, but you don't see it. So because they're linear, really we're just dealing with planes. So think of a sheet of paper in three space. So you're, you're holding a sheet of paper in your hand. And in this case, we've got three of them. So we'll have three sheets of paper and we're looking for where these planes touch. All right, the next part we'll want to discuss is uh, the word system. So what? does the word system mean? It just means we have more than one equation. And this group of more than one equations, in our, in our system here, we generally have three. So we'll have three equations, and those three equations represent three planes in three two-dimensional planes in three space, and we have more than one plane. So when you have more than one plane, they call those that group a system. It's not bad at all. So it turns out it looks pretty complicated, but it's not complicated even for a Thursday. Let's give you an example of a system and an example solution, because you might be wondering, does a solution to this system look like? And here you have it. Here we have a system. We have three equations, one, two, three. I number my equations and I identify them with a number that's circled. So it's equation one, equation two, and equation three. And these represent three planes. They're all touching specifically one point. For this specific system, they all touch, all the three planes touch at one point at x equals negative one, z, y equals two, excuse me, and z equals negative two. So an answer or a solution to a system would be a point, in this case, it's in three dimensions, so you have three components, x, y, and z. So any point that is on all three planes at the same time. So you could tell if a point was a solution if you plug it into each of the equations and you got a true statement for each equation. Let's talk quickly about the different solution categories. So we have 
one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. The one solution category, you can see that the, pl that the planes only touch at one spot. It's that yellow dot right in the middle. And also for this second picture, the three planes only touch at one specific spot. That will be the case we will we'll be dealing with down below when we have a missing variable, so we'll watch for that to play out. You have the no solution category where your three planes never touch. In the first picture, you see that all three planes are parallel and never touch. In the second picture, you see some touching here between the purple and the green and some touching <clears throat> here between the the green and the red, but we never see all three of them touch at the same time. Also down here at the final picture, looks kind of like an A that's rotated. And again, we see touching between the red and the purple, touching between the red, or sorry, the green and the purple, and touching between the red and the green, but not all three of them. So lots of options for the no solution category. And the infinite solution category, the solution in this for, in this picture is a line. So all three of these planes touch in a vertical line. And every point on that line is a solution, an x, y, z solution. So we have infinite solutions. So how do we know which of the options we're in when we're given a system? It's a fair question. Well, the answer is actually fairly simple. If we get an answer when we're solving, then we're in option number one. That means we only have one solution, unless our algebra is incorrect, of course. Otherwise, when we're solving our system, all the variables will drop out. They will all fall away. They'll cancel out as we're doing our addition or our substitution, and we'll be left with numbers and an equal sign. If those numbers and equal sign make a true statement, like 0 equals 0 or 2 equals 2, then we know we are in the infinite uh, a solution category, which is option number three. If they do not make a true statement, if what's left, the numbers and the equal sign make a false statement, then we are in option number three, which means we have no solution. So how do we solve these solutions? for these solutions. How do we solve these systems? Well, we choose two of the three equations we're originally given, and we use a substitution or addition method to eliminate one of the three variables. Then we repeat the process. We go back and choose two different equations from our original set of three, and we eliminate that same variable. That gives us two new equations that just have two variables. And we use those two equations and two variables to solve for the remaining two variables. Once we have those two variables, then we go back and back substitute into one of the original three equations and find the last remaining variable. All right, here is our example. What happens if we're missing a variable? Lucky for us, life gets easier and we can celebrate. So notice we're missing a y right here in equation number one. So let's uh, use equation two and equation three and get rid of the y's here in equation two and equation three and then we'll just be left with x's and z's and we can go from there. So let's use equation 3 and we'll multiply equation 2 by negative 2 and we'll add them together and we'll see what we get. So equation 3 then is x plus 2y plus z equals 16. That's equation 3. Now we do negative 2 times equation 2. So that gives us negative 2x, negative 2z, 
or sorry, negative 2y and negative 2 times 2z gives us negative 4z. And on the right hand side, we get negative 34, which is negative 2 times 17. Now we can add them. Oh, whoops, we need to put a label here. <clears throat> this is 2.1. So it's not equation 2. It's our newer version of equation 2, so we'll call it 2.1. So now when we add them, we have x minus 2x, and that gives us negative x. We have 0 in the y category, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. And we have negative 3z. And then on the right-hand side, we have negative 18. So that gives us another, ver another um, equation. We have negative x minus 3z equals negative 18. And we will call that equation equation number 4. So now we can use equation number 1 and equation number four, and we can solve for x and y, because equation number one didn't have a y, and we used equation two and three to get rid of a y and get us another equation without a y. So now I've got two equations without y's here in the green circle to the bottom right, and we can solve for x and y. Then we'll take that x and y, put it back into one of the original three equations, solve for z, or sorry, x and z, put it back into one of the original equations to solve for y, and we'll be done. So let's take these two equations, um, equation one and equation four. It looks like if we just add them straight up the way they are, we'll get rid of the x. So that's that's actually really nice. So let's add equation 1 and equation 4 and see what we get. Equation 1 is x plus z equals 8. Equation 4 is negative x minus 3z equals negative 18. When we add them, we get 0 for the x's, which is beautiful. And we'll get negative 2z equals negative 10. Then we can divide both sides by 2, or negative 2. And that gives us z equals 5. But that is a terrible z equals 5. Let me do that a little better. We get z equals 5. That is wonderful. We have one of our two or three variables solved for. Now if we take that z equals 5, and we plug it into equation 1 or equation 4, we can solve for x. Let's use equation number 1. So equation number 1 is here. Um, we have z, so we can erase the z, and we can plug in 5 in its place. So now we can subtract 5 from both sides. And what do we get? we get x equals 3. That's wonderful. Now we have x equals 3, and we have z equals 5 that we already have from a previous step. And we can plug that into equation 2 or equation 3, and we can solve for y. So let's use equation number 2. Here we have equation 2. Let's see what we have. We already have the x 
So we can get rid of the x variable and put in 3 because that's what x equals. We already have the z. So let's get rid of the z and put in 5. And what do we have now? We have 3 plus y plus 10 equals 17. That gives us 13, or sorry, y plus 13. Equals 17 if we take negative 13 on both sides. We get our answer. We get y equals 4. So, what do we have for our, for our solution? We have um, x equals 3, we have y equals 4, and z equals 5. So there's our answer. We simplified the, our a solution technique because we could take advantage of the fact that we were missing a variable, so life was good. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.